What's up guys? Welcome back to the Little Scale Cars YouTube channel. Today in the review box we have what is possibly the hardest to find mainline of the year. As everybody seems to want this one, it was definitely the hardest one for me to find. It's the Bugatti Bolide. And yes, I know it's technically supposed to be pronounced Bolide, but that sounds stupid to me, and I prefer the term Bolide. I prefer the way that sounds, so that's what I'm going to call it. So, let's get into this and see if it is worth adding to your collection. Let's go ahead and get started with our casting. Taking a quick overlook at it, we will see that our proportions are really, really good. This thing is super wide for a Hot Wheels, so that is good. We'll go ahead and pop the real-life car up in the top right-hand corner there for you to do a little comparison with it. So, getting into the actual casting itself, we will see that there is quite a lot of casted in details like every little body line is there and that's actually quite surprising considering like just how uh crazy this car really is like all these little shutoffs are here all the little holes in the bodywork are there represented well looking really really good like honestly that's i mean some of the details are just kind of hard to see like there's even a little lip right about here that's casted in, which just looks really, really nice. When we come to the back, this is where we do have a little bit of a hiccup, and that is that this section right here is not really supposed to be there. There's extra metal there. Uh, I would assume, like, this is there to keep the casting's integrity strong so that it doesn't fall apart, so that it can actually be sold as a toy. Uh, the wing is actually not too bad. Um, usually Hot Wheels wings are really, really thick, and this is, again, thicker than it really should be but it doesn't look bad honestly and then the exhaust is also casted in so that's pretty cool uh the way it comes down to being engineered though is our roof is actually a piece of the window here so it is kind of transparent and then if we come up front here the splitter is a piece of the base and it kind of has these flanges up into this section here and then it also the interior is kind of these vents inside here and then if we come to the back here, this diffuser section is also a massive chunk of the base. So overall, just very nicely done on Hot Wheels part uh, for the casting. When it comes to our paint and deco, we are mostly this gloss black color, which does hide a lot of the lines a little bit. But however, it is pretty realistic to what the real life car had. Uh, and then we also have this massive blue tampo going over almost the entire thing to give it that two-tone look which is something pretty unique. Um, I will say be on the lookout for this tampo. Sometimes it's not as clean as it could be, and then other times it's kind of misplaced. So just kind of watch that when you're picking this up. But I think that this was a perfect choice for the first release, and I'm actually pretty surprised by how nicely done it came out. Moving into our details category, we will start up front, and these are strictly the non-casted in details. We do have headlights. Now, interestingly, these are actually casted in, uh, so if you were to remove all the paint and tampos, these are still there, those X's. And then we do get little tampos over top of them, so that's really cool. We do get the Bugatti logo actually casted in. It's just not tampoed or painted or anything. Uh, if it really bothers you that much, it would not be hard at all to paint that on. And then as far as uh, other details, we do have a windshield wiper in the right place on the Bulide. And then as we come up to the top, hood scoop again. Coming into the back here, uh, we do have exhaust, like we mentioned, it is casted in though, however, and no kind of paintwork treatment. But we do get taillights, which is surprising, and then we get this kind of blue accent as well around the taillights to just kind of give it a little bit more color on the back, which looks good. We do get the little stripe going down the shark fin, which just, again, helps with a little pop of color there. And uh, kind of surprising for a mainline to get that much detail and just the kind of crazy things that are going on with this casting. Moving into our roll test, as always, it's a Hot Wheels mainline, so it should be no surprise that it rolls quite well. Went ahead and put it on the scale, and it comes out to be 36.44 grams, so it is a little bit on the heftier side for a mainline, which is really, really nice to see. For our pros and cons, we'll go ahead and get started with our pros. The biggest pro is that this is the first Bolide done in the 164th scale range. So nobody else has done one, Mini GT has teased one, uh, but has never shown any sort of prototype or anything like that for it. So really can't say too much about it, but that is the first one, and it was done pretty nicely. That brings us into the other pro being that this is a mainline, and for a mainline at that one-ish, 125-ish dollar price range, 
you really, I don't really know what else you could really expect to want. I've seen a few little nitpicks uh, on Instagram and other places about this casting and release, but I really don't know what more you could expect out of the $1 price point, and for that price point, I think you get a really, really good example of a Bugatti Belide here. However, there is one con that I can come up with pretty easily, and that is this roof here. It doesn't really blend in quite well with the rest of the paint because it is this like transparent. They did texturize it at least, so it isn't as easy to see through as it could be. However, I just uh, I don't really see why it couldn't have been metal and just done the windows around it. I don't really know. I'm not a casting engineer or anything like that. I definitely think that that could have been metal though, and so that will go down as the really only massive con for the casting. For some quick size comparisons, here we have it with some other Bugatti models that you might have in your collection. With the Mini GT Bugatti Vision Gran Turismo and the Matchbox Bugatti Devo. And here we have it with some other track focused supercars you might have in your collection. With the Tarmac Works Pagani Huayra R and the LCD models McLaren Senna GTR. All right, so with all of that out of the way, it is now time to give my overall thoughts. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a 9.8 out of 10. The hype was over the moon for me on this one. I was really excited for it. And I am thrilled with how well this one came out. Uh, it is honestly much better than I was expecting. When I first saw that this one was coming, I was a little concerned because it's not a car that I really thought Hot Wheels could execute well just because of how crazy and how um, intricate the design is. Uh, but it actually came out much better than I was expecting. Uh, outside of the roof being plastic and then the details perhaps not being as nice as you'd like it to see, um, those are really the only little complaints that I have, and for this being a mainline at the $1 price point, uh, it's really easy to overlook those issues and really just kind of ignore them because what more do you really want for a dollar, you know? Uh, if Mini GT does go ahead and make this car, I will go ahead and pick it up from them just because they will be able to replicate some of the details and finer, um, things about it, give it some carbon fiber a little bit easier and it will look even better. But for right now, until they actually do that, uh, I am more than perfectly content with this being the only belied representation in my collection. So I would say, if you are a 164th collector, and especially a collector of supercars, this is one you absolutely need to have in your collection. Do whatever it takes to get a hold of this, but don't pay the scalper prices. Just keep diligently looking and you will eventually find it. It took me forever to find one. When I did finally find one, it ended up having a big paint issue up front here on the Tampo. Uh, was a little bit more diligent, persistent. It took me about two or three weeks, but I did eventually find uh, another one, as you can see here. So I would say, just be persistent. You'll find one because you definitely want this one in your collection. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap up this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Leave a comment telling me what your thoughts are on this particular model and release. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I will see you in the next video.